right, before I finish up with all the bracing and uh, building out the bottom and before it goes to paint, there's one thing that I wanted to do that I forgot to talk about and that's going ahead and getting this stuff pre-drilled for the rails that run across that x-axis. Uh, it's a pretty important step and uh, you got to pay lots of attention to make sure everything gets lined up correctly uh, because this is paramount in having a uh, machine that it works perfectly parallel with all the axes. So what I did here was just create some filler strips that are going to ride against this part all the way down and all my holes are drilled on the exact point that they should be and I've got a clamp that runs perpendicular to each one of those holes. Now this is an important step. You can see that the clamp is half on the piece, the filler piece, and half on the bar. Even though this bar is cold rolled still and it's pretty straight, it's not exactly straight and you do have to flex it in position. So this part is paramount to getting this thing set up correctly. There's a little bit of play that I'm going to have within these holes here versus the screw that's going in there and that's going to give me enough room to tweak it afterwards if I need to. Now I got this little Irwin clamp here and all I'm doing is just using that to, to hold it down because it still is a little bit springy in the front part so I'm just pushing it flat. This part here you want to make sure you use pretty uh, good clamps. They don't have to be expensive but this the plastic type uh, lever actuated clamps do not work for this. You have to have a little bit more torque to pull together. So a regular C clamp or these little tiny bar clamps are more than adequate to pull the, the uh, steel together or straight. Here's another quick tip. Because these holes were bigger, I went out and bought the size of a lag, lag screw that would fit down in there. It's the same size, 3 8 of this bolt. This is not what I'm using to affix the steel. I'm actually using a 5 16 lag bolt. However, I went out and got a one of these 3 8 that had a really nice tip on it that wasn't all crooked and then I can set it down in here center it up by eye and just tap it with a hammer and I'll leave a little mark in there which centers uh, the hole. Now I'm using a brad point bit to drill the pre-drill for the 516 so by going down and just tapping in that hole when I go and set my brad point in there I'm not having to mess around with trying to center it each time it's already pre-centered. It doesn't take much just a little bit of hit but uh, this is going to help you align everything quickly and efficiently. Alright I'm all done drilling and I'm ready to do the final sinking and as I've gone along I went ahead and just put the lag screws in, in the place where they need to be just to hold it as I'm going down. Now you can see all the clamps are still on and they're going to stay on until we finally screw everything in. Now don't forget even though we're pre-drilling the lag screw at the top actually has a thicker piece so you got to account for that too so you're going to do a minimal larger pre-drill at the very top of the hole just enough to let this piece slide in there without binding it against the wood. All right. Also what you're going to want to do is get yourself some wax. This is a little tea light and a little candle and all I'm doing is before I put it in I just hold the screw and rub it up and down the threads It deposits wax on there. When it goes into the wood it goes in nice and easily uh, that way the screw has no chance to heat up or snap on you. Alright this is what it looks like when it's all done and I got the carriage on there sliding around just to show you see we got plenty of clearance underneath the carriage so none of those bolts are going to hit. So what I'm probably going to do is when I go and reassemble this after everything's painted ready to go is just throw a lock washer on each one of those as well just to make sure nothing comes loose ever. Probably a little overkill because those went in there nice and tight and hand tighten them don't use any impact wrench. I, I did use those to set them down in there a little bit but then a socket wrench to finish it off. But that is basically how all the axes are going to be done and uh, it's pretty simple it just takes a little bit of time. Alright since I got these rails on here I figure now is a good time to show you how the rack and pinion setup is assembled on this x-axis so that you get a better understanding of how it all comes together but uh, this is it right here and it just attaches to the carriage so I'll, I'll get it in a little closer shot and I'll show you how it all works. So as you see it's bolted up to the carriage here and we have one main pivot point which is this guy right here. Uh, this can go up and down and everything is held under tension 
by these bolts here and here which connect a spring loaded uh, drive mechanism which can be uh, tightened or put in more slack using the turnbuckle. Right over here is the gear mechanism and the motor is going to be installed inside of here and then there's going to be a sprocket on the motor which is going to be belt driven which goes around here. Now you can see we got two different gears we have this and this. This one here is what connects to the actual motor itself with a belt and this is what rides up against the rack assembly which is not installed right now but if you look very closely we have super tight tolerances all the way down it is very important when building this machine that you account for those tolerances because any deviation out is not going to make this thing perform correctly so I went into all the calculations to make sure it would work and left the right amount of tolerances to make it work so that's just a free flowing gear that uh, has a bushing inside of there that is driven via the motor belt drive and what you end up with after this rides up and down the rack is a very fast and accurate moving CNC machine.